Hello, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. I wanted to tell you as a Texas prepper, thank you for everything oh, that you're doing. doing. How are you doing down there? I'm spectacular. We came through yeah. unscathed. Thank All God. Right, God. But a lot Scott, didn't. Thank you. Thank and you thank that. you. Don't, don't thank me. Thank our community. Thank our community because they're the ones that did it. I do. I wanted to thank everybody, but I specifically wanted to thank you because you took it on and you spearheaded it. Well, we're not and done yet. We're going all the way through no, the month of March. No, we're not. But there is there's a lot of mm, ugliness, crap, name calling, hatefulness, manipulation, and lies going on in the prepper community right now. Preach well, you know what? And it Preach sucks that. and it's tearing us apart. Yeah. Well, and you know, you know what? Because um, whenever whenever I start seeing drama on any channel, I just drop off because I don't go. I don't do the drama thing. So in all actuality, I have no idea what you're talking about. That's what keeps me sane. <laughs> I'm glad, and I want I want you to know that you are a shining light in this community. Yes, he because is. there yeah. are people that I cannot even G-rated yeah. describe out you know there what? that are tearing I'm, I'm us very, up. Yeah, I'm so very happy you. that uh, I'm very happy that you're doing well. Before you go, I'm not sure if you're going to stay long enough, but uh, do you live in a uh, large community or a smaller community, like urban community, or I live in a sub in a suburb of southeast of Houston. Okay, and so I sent, all right. I sent you yeah. a link to one of the smaller uh, food banks okay. near me. All right, then I probably have that then. Okay. Yeah. Because because the, our next donation is gonna I'm gonna try to find a small food bank that that's usually overlooked by the larger organizations to make sure that they're taken care of as well. So that's my goal for the next that, donation. We should be doing it sometime this week. That, that's what that's why I sent you that one is because they get overlooked. So okay. Thank you so much for everything you. that you're doing and that you're well, leading everybody else to do, especially. Well now in the community thank you i'm just i'm very so happy I'm, that you're doing well so thank you i'm gonna say good night i just wanted to make sure that i got to tell you that in person <laughs> thank you very much thank you you're for welcome bye-bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye. well you're the John, godfather you of you? the prepping are you community trying to get me reason? on here so I, hey are you trying to get me on here so i can cry on camera or something cry on camera are you trying you're to get me on so I can get emotional on camera, man? Look at that. I almost shed a tear. But that's no, good, man. man. I'm so happy I mean, about that. I'm going to send some over. It's on your uh, Kofi account. Is that correct? Did you say coffee or Kofi? It's K-O-F-I. Okay. Can I, uh, I, crazy question. Can I send it from PayPal to K-O-F-I? I, I believe so because uh, they're linked to PayPal. Okay. So I'll because what happens is uh, Kofi... Once someone makes a donation to Kofi, uh -huh. uh, they take it and immediately, immediately, there's no time gap. Immediately, they send it to my PayPal account. Okay, so that's, that's how it works. And I, I think they keep like, I think it's like three and a half or four percent, which is really not bad compared to some of the other, you know, uh, cash apps that there are. Okay. So uh, thank you, Paul. Yeah, Paul said he just donated via PayPal. So I'll uh, I'll send you something over, you know, from my personal PayPal after the show. I got yeah, so yeah, much yeah. stuff going on. I don't want the computer to crash. <laughs> yeah, well, we 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 we've done a really good job, man. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. since I start, since I put up that video the very first day, uh, mm -hmm. to today, I haven't looked at the account today, but I think we've collected over eight thousand dollars already. That's awesome. And, That's and awesome. of course, if you saw if you saw my, uh, I think it was my last video. I, I put up where I already donated five thousand dollars of that. So wow. yeah, I'm definitely not. I, I don't want to. I don't want to hold on to the money. I want to get it out there as soon as possible. So yeah, man. I think things are working out good when it comes to that. And hopefully, the people that uh you know get the relief from the food banks can really use it, and it'll be a blessing to them. I just hope that uh you know, I mean, it's it's not a lot compared to the need, but it's what we can do. So yeah, um, folks in the chat, really quickly, the first link down below actually will donate to Texas through his Kofi account. And um, thank you for being here. Please, tonight, I'm asking, do not super chat me. I would rather you send that money to Rudy. 
Um, so and, yeah, Rudy, I got questions lined up, brother. Yeah. What's up? Can I say can I say one last thing when it comes yes, to sir. the donations? Ladies and gentlemen, you know, I'm not pointing at anyone in particular because I'm not. I don't even know a name, but if anyone is not comfortable with the donation coming through me and then me making it, that's fine and that's understandable. Go ahead and watch the previous video that I made. It shows you how easy it is for you to donate yourself. So if you're the kind of person that you would rather just donate yourself, by all means, please do so. It doesn't have to come through me. You know, it doesn't have to come through me. Uh, I went ahead and, and took this on. That way, you know, it would be easier for people because they already know about it. They already know my link. And, and uh, for those of you that don't know me or haven't visited my channel, uh, I'm very transparent with everything I do. I show you how much money I got. I show you how much money I, I, I sent over and I show you the process. So you don't have to be worried about that. But if you're uncomfortable, that's okay. It's understandable. All right. You can I, still make a donation yourself. It's crazy, uh, you know, that you bring it up. Um, I actually had to post a, a link over on my Facebook yesterday listing the, like screenshots from PayPal with the donations and things yeah. over the past that, five or six okay. months. And you know because, what? That's all, that's all right. It's all right to do that because I mean, you know, some people they're they're curious, and then it's all right. Yeah. You know, it's okay to be curious. And hey, man, are you really doing this? You know, if, if you're going to do something for good, then you should be able to provide that transparency to the people mm -hmm. that are actually donating. And I'm all right with that. I don't yeah. take offense. Yeah. I don't take offense to someone asking me to show them proof. I don't. I don't one bit because I have nothing uh, to hide as far as it goes as far as me giving money. I don't, I don't have anything on. So, and then on yeah. top of that, last year, right before Christmas, you had your vehicle loaded down. Like you actually went through oh, the yeah. physical movement of delivering this stuff. Yeah, and that, was, like, a, that was a good time. That was a lot of work, but it was very <laughs> gratifying. It well, was very that scared me off. I saw that and I'm like, no, I think I'll just donate all the, you know, PayPal <laughs> and, you know, let them buy their own stuff um, because that Next looked like I might hire someone to do all the, all the heavy lifting. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So yeah. I've got questions here for you. They were ready to go. And yeah, I was yeah. like, oh my God, I just opened the floodgates. And uh, so these questions are pretty much tailored to you. Um, okay. So first of all, you know, Texas, obviously folks, we know what happened in Texas. Um, I think Rudy would agree with me that it's going to happen again at some point somewhere in the United States. Um, what are three things that people can do to prepare for that? Oh, very... Very easy question, but very long answer. Then that's so the, the, the three things is your first three B's of prepping. Okay, so get your beans. Beans doesn't just stand for food. It stands for beans and biologicals. What do you need in order to live? Obviously, we need air. And we have air, right? So far, we don't have to pay for air. So we're good on that department. <laughs> so far, yeah. Right? <laughs> but you need water. And uh, I did a video a while back where I said something like, become your own infrastructure. Take a look at the things in your life that you depend on an infrastructure for and become your own or have your own infrastructure as a backup. For example, we all depend on an infrastructure to get water delivered to our homes via pipes and pumps and all that kind of stuff, right? So have a plan to become your own water infrastructure, either by storing water or either by having a collection system, by having filters that you can filter water and make that water potable. Because a lot of times, whenever water is a problem in any kind of a crisis, it's not because there's no water, but because the water that's available is not potable. And, and uh, if you research this, more people die every year from water, from like cholera, you know, and, and, and bad mm -hmm. water than they do from starvation or war because they don't have that basic infrastructure set up where they live. So become your own infrastructure when it comes to water. And that's very simple. Store water, okay? Have a way to collect water in case your stored water runs out and then have a way to clean the water. Mm -hmm. So that covers your water. And then of course, same thing with food. Uh, we depend on the uh, just-in-time and supermarket infrastructure so mm -hmm. that we can get our food, or at least most of us do, right? There's a few people out there that are very self-reliant, and that's a great thing. But most people depend on being able to go and buy their meats with that little pink foil in the bottom or pink thing in the bottom, right? And <laughs> a super thing, yeah. Right? 
So have your own infrastructure when it comes to food. Have a pantry that's fully loaded with a year's worth supply of food. Have some long-term grains put away in five-gallon buckets now that they are still cheap. They're still cheap. And, and that will stretch your one-year supply of food. A good storage of grains like rice, wheat, oats, beans, a good storage of those things will extend your one-year food supply in your pantry to probably two years because grains are what I like to call a maintenance food. Uh, they, are, they are a caloric maintenance food, meaning that they have a lot of calories but not necessarily a lot of proteins and fats. So they can give you those calories that you need to supplement your proteins and your vegetables and things like that that you have in your pantry, right? And you do the same thing with everything, okay? You create your own infrastructure, right? So I I'm gonna consider that one, one of the three things. Mm -hmm. The second thing is, what do you call it? Train, right? Make sure that when you go get a cool prepper gear, when you, get a, when you go and get a nice little camping stove or whatever it is, learn how to use it. At least learn how to use it once or twice so that you're comfortable with it because that's called muscle memory. When you train yourself and you do something so many times that you can then do it with your eyes closed, right? That's called muscle memory. And what that does is, it, let me just tell you a quick story. In the military, we train a lot, or we used to, I used to train a lot with firearms, right? Why? Because when you're in a stressful situation, you don't have to think about it. You just do it. That's called muscle memory. Same thing. If you are putting stuff away uh, in order to prepare for a crisis, any crisis, you don't want to have to be looking at the owner's manual of that item during the crisis. You want to be able to know how to use it. So and uh, a second answer to that second part is... Try things that you think you may need to know how to do now before you actually know how to do it. For example, pressure canning. I get so many comments on my videos saying, I've had a pressure canner for a year, but I'm afraid of it. Well, if you don't learn how to use it now, how well off do you think you're going to be when you really do need to use it? You know, so train with your things. Learn how to use the things that you get. Don't just get them, put them away and hope that you never have to use them. Right. And then number three, the number th I just did a video on this here. I still have to upload it and everything. But the third thing is, ladies and gentlemen, we are coming up on one of the biggest, if not the biggest downfall in the stock market and financial markets in the history of mankind. If you're not preparing for that, then what you're doing is, is you're enabling yourself to have nothing when we get to the other side. Because what you have to understand is that prepping is to get you through the crisis. Wealth preservation is so that oh, after yeah. the crisis is mm -hmm. over, you can have something to something to start over with again. Oh, that's so on the we list. Start, We're going to talk about that. I okay. know you're an expert when it comes. To <laughs> so you need to start preparing mm -hmm. yourselves now for yeah. for this new paradigm, because. What I'm thinking is, and I guess we can talk about this later on, like you said, so I won't get well, into it too whenever. much. But what I'm thinking is that, not thinking, I know this, all right? I like mathematics. And, and you can't fool math. You cannot fool math and you cannot fool nature. It's kind of two and the same, right? It doesn't matter how long you manipulate something, eventually nature will set it back to its mean. And we have been manipulating everything, ladies and gentlemen, not we per se as you or me, but our government and our central mm -hmm. banks have been manipulating everything for decades, if not for over a hundred years. Yeah, well, and definitely when, since the gold standard was dropped, right? Yeah, since well, away, even, yeah. even before then, even before then, a lot, a lot of people think that FDR was a hero, but FDR mm -hmm. really sold out America to the Federal Reserve. Wow. When he when he when he confiscated the gold back in '34, what he really did was he sold out the United States of American citizens to the Federal Reserve by bailing out the Federal Reserve. And people don't really know that because it's not in the it's not in the textbooks in schools. But FDR was definitely not a hero. Uh, yeah, they leave a lot out in the textbooks, it seems like. <laughs> yeah. Um, so crypto is here to stay. You explained this to me on the phone the other day. Makes perfect sense. Sailing Prepper was actually on here before you got on here and he was explaining it. Um, I, I think it's, you can't even argue the fact that it's here to stay. It's not going anywhere. Yeah. But 
for us newbies, what is the best way to get started and what kind of advice would you give to the people that are new to crypto? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I have to say that I'm not a financial advisor. Yeah, uh -huh. I'm okay. definitely not. <laughs> so, so first off, you know, when, when people hear cryptos, the first thing they say is, oh, that's the mark of the beast. Okay. You know, yeah. that, that's my experience. Okay. So the difference between what I think is, you know, like the mark and cryptocurrencies as we know them today, like Bitcoin and all of the other cryptocurrencies and tokens that fall under Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. The difference between those and what I think the mark is, is what I think is coming. Is when the government says, hey, listen, do you want me to help you? Okay, so we have this central bank digital currency that is completely centralized, meaning that is completely controlled by one entity. That is what I would say the mark is. Because once that happens, John, after our next big crisis, Whatever it may be, I think it's going to be a stock market crash, but I don't know. But they need a very big crisis in order to implement this. So after our very next, oh, sorry about that. After our next big crisis, people are going to be in more destitute than they are today. And they'll accept anything. And they will implement that cryptocurrency from the Federal Reserve, from the central bank. They'll be able to tell you what you can and can't buy. They'll be able to look at your browsing history on your computer and say, oh, wait a minute here. I don't think John should be going into Sportsman's Warehouse to buy any ammo. So let me go ahead and block that that sale, block that purchase. They'd be his, seeing a lot of silver on mine. I, buy, I try well, there you go. What I'm saying is they'll be able to block you. That, that right there is the bad side of a cryptocurrency because it is a cryptocurrency, but it's completely centralized or governed by one entity. Now, on the other side, we have the free market cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. And I'm, I'm just going to say Bitcoin. But whenever I say Bitcoin, I, I'm referring to, you know, like all of the cryptocurrencies. It's just that the are biggest. Public, right. Yeah. Right. Uh, so something like Bitcoin cannot be stopped by government. They can try to, to hinder it. I mean, China couldn't stop it. India couldn't stop it. Nigeria couldn't stop it. No one can stop it. Uh, Venezuela couldn't stop it. And what I mean by stop it is that something like Bitcoin does not have a warehouse. They don't have a headquarters. So you can't go knock down a door and say, you're shut down. It, it's impossible to stop it. Bitcoin is run by the people that are in it all over the world. You know, it's called miners. So whenever that's you actually Bitcoin, what's most appealing to me about it, you know, I didn't really understand what, it. And then when you guys started explaining yeah. it to me, I'm like, wait a minute. The government can't get their hands on it. They can't they regulate cannot. it. And, and, you know, then my antenna went up. I'm like, wait, this is going to be big. Look, they cannot confiscate it. The only way that the government can get a hold of it is if you give them your password. So, <laughs> yep. So, so not happening. <laughs> exactly. That's the only way that there's, I forgot, man, I forgot the exact story, but I think there's a guy that just got out of jail. I think he spent like four or five years in jail. For, for something. I forgot what it was, but he's got $50 million worth of Bitcoin. And he wouldn't give them the password. Wow. And he's like, no, I'm not giving you the password. How, how are they going to get it? They can't get it. All he needs to do is go find himself a computer, put a VPN on it, download a wallet, get his password, and download his crypto. They cannot confiscate it from you. Now, can they make it illegal? Sure they can, just like they did in China, but has to stop them. China's got one of the biggest crypto mining operations in the world. They made it illegal in China, but has it stopped them? No. They made it illegal in, I think it was Nigeria, I think it was. And eventually, they, they had to back off and said, okay, you guys can do it. Yeah. They cannot stop it. It is run by the people. And, and now I'm talking about Bitcoin specifically. A lot of all currencies, which are alternate cryptos to Bitcoin, a lot of them are somewhat centralized, but they're more like, stocks all right those are more like stocks they're like actual companies that are actually doing something that are using the cryptoverse in order to put their product out so you have to be very careful when you deal with cryptocurrencies if i were talking to my brother and he asked me what cryptocurrency should i invest in for the long term i would say litecoin i mean i would say bitcoin ethereum litecoin 
And another one that I know of that's called Cardano mm -hmm. uh, is what I would tell them, right? If he was and asking. You go where now? What is the website again for? for okay, so if you go to Coinbase, Coinbase is the most popular one. If you're a newbie, I would recommend Coinbase because it's very easy to use. It's regulated by the SEC, which means that they have to follow KYC, which is no, which is which means know your customer regulations. So it's like a bank, but a bank for cryptos. So when you go to Coinbase, you're going to open an account just like you open an account in a bank. So don't be surprised when they ask you for a picture of your ID, for your social, for your address. It's called know your customer. So whenever you go to a bank to open up a bank account, they have to do the KYC. They have a picture of your license. They get your social security number. They get your address and all that stuff. Same thing with Coinbase. It's a bank, a bank for cryptocurrencies, right? So, so that's where you go. That's where you can get it the easiest. There are exchanges that you can go to where you can actually buy cryptos and you can trade them very easily. Now, I'm on one of, a, I'm on one of those exchanges. It's called Bittrex, and it's out of Las Vegas, I believe. Or Nevada, somewhere out of Nevada. I'm not sure if it's Las Vegas, or but that's a. It's also regulated by the SEC. They also do KYC, just like a regular bank does. So that's how I do my, you know, little crypto thing. And um, uh, it's very easy to get into with Coinbase. That's how I first started a few years back. Mm. And you know, I'm not going to tell you whether I recommend it or not, but I'll tell you my story, and I'll tell you what I think is going to happen in the next several years. I learned about cryptos back in 2016. I studied it for like six months. And after studying it for like six months, just learning as much about it as I could. And, and by no means am I an expert, all right? But I learned as much about it as I could. And I was finally convinced this is the future. Cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin right now, in my opinion, is like what the internet was back in 1995, right? When you still had dial-up. Yeah. That's how that's, mm. that's how young it is. That's how young it is. Look at where we're at now. I'm talking to you off of right. my phone. And, and, <laughs> you're and, talking and to you're me thousand. from a place I would like to be. I would like to be in yeah. Alaska right now. So, so look at how look at look at where the internet's taken us in the last twenty plus years or thirty years. That's where Bitcoin is going to be in the next ten years. I actually uh, knew people. Soon. I knew people that thought the internet was going to be a fad when it first came out. Yeah. You know the what was it, 26K modems or something like that? Yeah. I have a really newbie question for crypto really quickly. When you exchange, like when you buy and sell crypto, is there any sort of tax on it whatsoever? Only on money that you real, only on fiat currency that you realize. So for example, I understand. let's say I have, let's say I have $5,000. Let's say I bought $5,000 of Bitcoin, right? And mm -hmm. I put it in my Coinbase. In Coinbase, you're you're able to do limited trading as well. It's not 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 as many coins available as there are in an exchange, but on Coinbase, you're able to do limited trading. So let's say that I put five thousand dollars of Bitcoin into Coinbase, and then let's say that all of 2021 I was trading it back and forth with Litecoin and whatever other cryptos they have in there, and and I made fifty thousand dollars this year. Right? When I take that money out. I realized my gains. So let's say I take that $50,000 out. I'm going to have to pay taxes on $45,000. And, and if, you, if you held on to the cryptos for more than one year, you're only going to pay capital gains taxes. If you held on to it for less than a year, you're going to pay whatever taxes you pay on your income. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, you are, going to, you're, you are going to pay taxes on it. But you know what? A lot of people, when they first started saying about taxing Bitcoin, didn't like it. But when when they started talking about taxing Bitcoin here a while back, I thought it was a good thing. And this is why. Because when the government decided to tax profits off of Bitcoin, they legitimized it. Yeah. They said, this is a real thing and we are going to tax it. How can they tax something that, that doesn't exist, right? So they legitimize Bitcoin by saying, yep, we're going to tax you on the gains. Oh, yeah. It's not going anywhere. Um, I That's tried to I explain this to my wife. I tried to explain this to my wife. She's okay with me stacking silver, right? But mm -hmm. she's like, I don't like the idea of, of you know, investing in something you can't hold in your hand. I'm like, 
What do I do here? I can't let you her talk to you about it. Head. I can't let you her can talk do. to you about it because she thinks you're the greatest creator on YouTube. Well, I have you all the farms stacked up in my office that she's bought. I wish I had it. I wish I had it here, but uh, <laughs> Through you, your... you can hold Bitcoin in your hand. You can. Uh, so like on a flash out. drive or something? Yeah. This mm -hmm. is not it. All right. I, I have what's called a Trezor, which is a hard wallet. And it's it, it doesn't look like this, but it's the same concept. It's like a flash drive. Okay. Now, every Bitcoin has what's called a key. All right. It, it's a private key, meaning that that's it's like the serial number on a dollar. Right. Even though they mass produce dollars, everyone has a different serial number. So every Bitcoin has its own private key. And you can actually take that private key out of the internet and put it in your hard wallet where nobody else can can ever get to it. there's nothing they can do once you put it in your hard wallet they nobody can get to it unless you authorize them or unless they gain access to your password and your seed words and all that kind of stuff and get into your wallet so you can hold bitcoin believe it or not it's just in a yeah. digital form inside of a little vessel like this. It's just you, you can also, it so well, you know? <laughs> yeah, you can, you can also do what's called a paper wallet, where they have paper wallet generators on the internet that mm -hmm. are free to use. And you can actually take your private key after you purchase a Bitcoin or whatever it is, or a Litecoin. Like I have Litecoin on paper wallets that I downloaded years ago. Man, I paid like 27 bucks for these Litecoin years ago, right? And I, and I put them on a paper wallet. So when that paper wallet prints out, it actually takes those keys and puts them on that barcode that you just printed out. So it gives you it gives you a private key to that paper wallet and a barcode. And you can either enter the private key into your wallet to retrieve the, the Bitcoin or Litecoin from that paper wallet and put it back into your wallet. Or you can scan the barcode and it'll put it back into your wallet. It'll even it'll even allow you to put back fractions of whatever you have in that paper wallet. So you can technically you can hold it in your hands, but I, I understand what people say when they say you can't hold it. It's yeah. not real. Uh, you know what? Let me let me put it this way, John. Okay. A dollar, right? Or even a, or even a silver coin, right? Mm. This represents energy. Okay, this represents energy. That's what you, that's what your labor is. Your labor is your energy that you're trading to someone else for this. Okay. So that's what this is. It took energy for this to be mined out of the ground. It took labor, right, and capital. And capital is earned with labor. So everything's about energy. In order for a Bitcoin to be created, it takes energy. It takes massive computer power, right? It takes mm -hmm. people actually having to work for the fiat that they're using to purchase the Bitcoin. And they're competing against each other. Is that correct? The, the different miner? miner? Yeah. We, well, they don't. Yeah, yeah. I guess you can say they compete against each other. What they do is, is they have these computers that solve mathematical uh, problems. So every time that someone's doing a transaction back and forth, you know, they charge you a fee, a very small fee. And, and, I mean, it's minuscule compared to a compared to a credit card transaction fee. It's minuscule, right? And, and the more advanced that they get, that cryptos get, the less that your fee is going to be. Right. But like, for example, right now, if I used the Litecoin to send you ten thousand dollars, it would probably cost me less than a penny. OK. And, right. and guess what? Nobody, nobody needs to know about it except for you and me. <laughs> See, right? I, I okay. understand this. Uh, I'm going to have to repitch it to my wife. I can't put her here to talk to you because she thinks you're the greatest thing on YouTube. Well, she you know, what? is your link to order survival food instead of my link. <laughs> Good for her. <laughs> Well, you know, what, John, I mean, one way that you could approach this is that whenever you're vested in a vehicle by which you want your your wealth to be preserved, whenever you're vested in something like this, you need to be diversified as well. Mm -hmm. So listen, this is my favorite metal in the world. This right here is the second most used commodity in the entire world but you're all not right? going to put all your wealth into it right exactly do you know what the first most used commodity in the entire world is what's that oil 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 is used for everything right 
Well, if this went away tomorrow, if all the silver in the world disappeared tomorrow, we would be back 100 years. We would go backwards 100 years. All right, because silver is used in everything. Everything that we need. The phone I'm talking on to you, with you, yeah. needs silver. The computer that I've got on needs silver. Everything that you can think about pretty much needs silver. So I love silver. I think it's the most undervalued asset in the entire world and in the history of mankind because of the manipulation. But I also have a little bit of gold, okay? I have some cash. I keep some cash in the house. Not a lot, but I keep enough so that if the uh, energy grid went down and I couldn't slide my credit card or my ATM card, that I can still go to the gas station and get something, get some ice, well, not ice, I mean, I'm in Alaska, but you know, get some milk, whatever. You know, I can still make small micro purchases with some cash that I have. So I keep enough to maybe get me by for a couple of weeks to a month, you know, in the house. So, you know, I, I like to have a little bit of crypto. Why? Just because I like to be diversified. Not because I'm a uh, crypto purist, that's the farthest thing away. I like to be diversified in that, just like I like to be diversified in everything. I have like five backup heating sources. Why? Just in case one fails. It's prepping, you know I mean? basically. Right. You know? Yeah. You should be diversified in all things. You should not only have one source of water that you can get water from, right? So why should you only have one source of wealth preservation, of a method to preserve your wealth? You should have several. Just in case one fails, another one can take over. Understood. Very good explanation. So let's get to know Rudy from Alaska Prepper, okay? Oh, man, you're <laughs> going to get in trouble now. No, you got tons of fans in here. I mean, come on now. You I'm got tons of fans. The chat, the hello, community. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, Rudy's hey, link is also down lady. below, guys. Uh, if you have not checked out Alaska Prepper, I very much encourage you to do so. He's awesome. So what is your favorite prepping meal, Rudy? Look at me, John. Do, you, do I look like I'm picky? <laughs> I'm saying if it's SHTF and you're sitting there and there's no power and, and you have to resort to your preps, what it, what's the first thing on the list that you're eating? Well, as, far, as far as food goes, I mean, mm. anyone that anyone that's seen like my pantry videos and my uh, pantry prepper, uh, my prepper pantry cooking videos, I cook, I, I, I store what I eat. So, you know, if the power went out tonight and they didn't come back for a month, a month from now, I'd be eating oxtail with rice and beans, you know, and stuff that I eat every day anyways. Oxtail. I, oh, man. I've if never had oxtail. My, if you didn't see my last video where I, I've never pressure canned oxtail before, <laughs> I pressure canned some. Oh, my goodness. Don't get me started, man. It was awesome. See, I, I'm a basic guy. Delicious. I'm thinking beef stew. You know, that's my go-to yeah. can of beef well, stew. Well, I did that too. Yeah, I, I canned. Uh, I I did a video where I pressure canned some beef stew and and I and I pressure canned oxtail as a as a test because I never done it before. It came out perfect. Uh, but yeah, I don't really have a favorite prepping meal because my preps are the regular foods that I eat anyways. Now I do have like Mountain House. And I have oxen farms and I have some long-term food storage that are actual meals and not ingredients because I like to be diversified in the foods that I prep as well. Yeah. But uh, those I usually just save for, you know, if something has, since they last such a long time, I save them for if something happens where it's an extended crisis that I can at least have that as a backup. So I do yeah, have them. We have a lot of oxen farms uh, now, too, thanks to your link. And my wife lurks on your videos and stuff. Um, Brenda Hobbs, thank you. Brenda Hobbs says she is a Rudy fangirl. She's in oh, the chat. Thank you, Brenda. That's awesome. thank you for that. Um, Rudy, what is your favorite prepping subject? The economy. The economy. It is. And a lot of people don't think that's prepping. But if, if you don't have good information, then you're not going to be able to prepare for what's coming. Well, you just like to, you explained it yeah. well a minute ago, you know. I, I, I love to talk about the economy because I believe that our financial system slash governmental system, which is the same thing. Uh, anyone that says that the Federal Reserve is not part of the government, on paper it's not, but the Federal Reserve owns the government. So I consider that, you know, 
I feel that the Federal Reserve owns our government. All right. So uh, I, I think that it's because of that institution that we find ourselves in the predicament that we're in today. And not only that, it's because of that institutions that we have caused so much harm throughout the world with never ending wars. So it's something that I'm passionate about because if people only knew about the Federal Reserve and about the banking system and, and about how it was made in order to enslave us, enslave yeah. us of our labor, of our time, of our wealth. If people only knew that, we may, we may see ourselves in a better world, you know, maybe a decade from now. But before that happens, uh, we're going to uh, have to face some harsh times. So, you know, I would say that that's the number one thing I like to talk about, about prepping, because I believe that information is a way of prepping. But of course, John, you've watched enough of my videos, man. I yeah. love to cook. Well, I would have to say <laughs> that to know how to cook. The, the two best when it comes to the financial part of prepping, in my opinion, are, you know, would be you and Jonathan Prepared Mind. He, he does a great job as well. But I did yeah. a video, it's probably been a year or so ago, but I, I explained things on a basic level, I guess. Um, but I explained it like our system is a game of monopoly and the bank never loses at the game of monopoly. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we play by their rules and they're always going to win no matter what. Yep. They are. They will, as long as they have the power of the printing press, mm. they will always win and they will always steal your wealth. That's it, why it I'm is, looking at crypto hard, man. <laughs> it is, it is a, it is an undeniable truth that every single day, your wealth is stolen from you every day, mm. every day, a little piece of your wealth is stripped from you because of the federal reserve. Yeah. And that that's something that no one can say. No, no, it's not. Yes, it is. It is undeniably true that every day we all get robbed from the federal reserve. Oh yeah. I got every robbed today. Robbed. I had to file my income taxes and had to pay $3,000. So yeah, I understand what oh, you're man. saying. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It sucks. Well, well it, it's, it's not only that, but you, you know what people, people have to understand that, we, we, we are governed by a debt monetary system, right? It's a debt-based monetary system. What does that mean? That means, you know the national debt clock? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What, what that means is us being governed by a debt monetary system or a debt-based monetary system means that if that debt clock ever stops, the entire system will implode. That's what that means. So um, if that debt clock ever stops, they have to continue to print money or fiat currency. Uh, a unit of fiat currency is nothing but a debt note. So when, when you, what, next time that you get paid and you go to the bank and you have a stack of bills in your hands, all you're holding are debt notes, are promissory notes, are, are little mini bonds. You know, everyone knows what the bond market is, right? The bond market is where the government puts bonds out for auction so that people can buy them. And effectively, what they're doing is they're lending the government money. So if you take a look at a dollar bill, that's, a, that's the same thing. It's a bond. It's a little mini bond. It's a bond. It's a promissory note to you. And it has absolutely zero value until you exchange it for something that has real value. But for how long will people continue to accept that dollar with what's going on in the world? You know, a lot of the world is waking up to what we've been doing. You know, just like three or four years ago, about 65% of all of the uh, transactions in the world were done with a dollar. Now we're down to 60 to 61%. And I mean, 4% doesn't sound like a lot, but that is a lot. Yeah. You know, we've been dropping on average about 1% a year. We're, we're in our dollar. spot, I think, is as top dog when it comes to the currency and stuff like that. What's that? I think we're losing our top spot. You know what I mean? The U.S. dollar. Oh, we will. Yeah, we will. The, the only reason that the dollar is still the reserve currency is because there's nothing else. There's nothing else that can take its place. And uh, central banks throughout the world will not use gold. <laughs> they don't want to use gold. Well, it's not central banks, but governments don't want to use gold. Gold is too restrictive. Gold actually puts the government on check. Hey, if yeah. you don't have enough gold, <laughs> To the amount of money you've got printed, then you have to, you know, deflate the economy and bring some of this money back, or you have to get more gold. 
They it, they have to rope in the spending that. if if it's yeah. backed by gold, you know. You know, can you imagine what a much better world this would be if we had a gold back currency still? How many less? How many more less wars we would be in? Because yeah. governments would not be able to just create fiat currency out of thin air, so that we can go blow up this guy over there to keep the military industrial complex employed. Um. So let me ask you this, Rudy. What is your favorite part of YouTubing? You've been YouTubing for a while. What's your favorite part? Oh man, my favorite part, man, is is my community members, man. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, you, you know, maybe maybe I tried to explain this a while back, but um, maybe you'll understand what I mean. You know, here we are, man, talking, right? Where if it wasn't for YouTube, I'd never known who John Daly, is, right? <laughs> never. You'd have never known who I am. Right. Right. Unless I robbed the bank or something, and you saw me on TV, right? So. Uh, you know, I try to explain to my community member, I say, you know what, it's kind of weird. Even though most of us will never, ever meet in person, you still feel, you know, you still get em emotion gets there. You know, you still, you know, like fall in love with your community members. You know, you, yeah. you still you still feel like, man, I can't wait till tomorrow, Sunday at 12 noon. I'm going to get to hang out with, with, with the AP community members. You know, and, and sometimes when I see someone pop on there and I get really excited because I hadn't seen them for, you know, pop in, in in a live stream for like six months. And I'm like, hey, how you doing, man? It's so good to see, you know, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's there's, uh, there's one guy in my community. He's probably over there, too, but uh, I'm all out of bubble gum. If I don't see him for like a week, I start asking people where he's at, you know? Yeah, because, you know, sometimes you wonder, like, well, you know, some people move on, and that's understandable. Yeah. You know, maybe some people get tired of me saying, ladies and gentlemen, a thousand times every video. I can understand that. If it's time for you to go, I can understand that. But, you know, when you see them after a while, you're like, oh, wow, man, it's so good to see you. You know, you, kind of, you build a relationship. Even, even though it's not a physical relationship, you still build a relationship over the interweb that's a real relationship. Yeah. Right. So for, for those of you out there that feel the same way that I feel that you can build a relationship over the interweb, then you should realize that Bitcoin is real. Did you yeah. get that, John? Yeah. Bitcoin one of the one of the if most can... heartbreaking things, though, I would have to say about YouTube, and I know it's probably happened to you a dozen times, is I it's been a month, month and a half ago. Uh, I, I went to check the P.O. box. And someone had me uh, had sent me a five dollar bill and a letter of apology, apologizing, saying that's all she had. And she went on to explain that she was a single mom and things like this. And mm. I'm like, you know, I actually mentioned it the next morning. I'm like, please do not. If you're in that situation, do not do that. Um, and I'm yeah. sure that's happened to you multiple times as well. It does happen. But let me go ahead and uh, let me go ahead and tell you a really quick story since I know that. That your people really like stories. I okay. received a letter. Yeah, they must. <laughs> <laughs> I received a letter a while back from a very nice lady, and it was during one of my food bank uh, runs, right? That I, I was collecting money for the food bank. She sent me seven dollars. Similar to your story, she said, "I'm sorry, this is all I have, uh, but I really want you to use this to put it towards the food bank." And man, when I read that, man, I felt terrible. Because she was on Social Security. I felt terrible. I really did. So I brought it up on my next live stream. And I and I said that. And then she must have been on my live stream because, you know, and I told people, please don't send me money. You know, please take care of yourself. Yeah. You know, if you, if, you wanna, if you want to, you know, donate, you know, or contribute to my work, let a 15-second ad run. Through. It'll only cost you 15 seconds of your life. But please don't send me money. If, yeah. you, if you can't afford it, please. So she emailed me the next day and she said, it was a blessing for me to be able to pay all of my bills and feed myself for this month and still have $7 left over. And if I can help you feed someone else, then that is a blessing as well. And then uh, I was reminded that in order to be a good giver, that you have to learn to be a good receiver. So, you know, that really, you know, made me think. I still to this day get uncomfortable when I get money. But I realize that it may be more important for that person that's sending you that $5 
than it is for you to receive it. It may be more important for them no. to say, right, that's... man, I'm, I'm, I'm paying it forward. You know, I, I, I'm doing something that's, that's going to help someone. It may be more important for them to feel that and to know that they're helping someone else than it is for you to receive that $5. So you should always receive it with, an, with open arms and honor the person that sent it to you by putting that $5 to work and helping someone else. Yeah, that's a very good point. Liz Rambo, thank you very much. Uh, Liz Rambo says, Rudy, you the man. What's up with uh, that, Liz? That. <laughs> uh, he is the man in the community. I, I call you the uh, godfather of the prepping community, man. I know, I saw like, your last video. I, I saw yeah, your last everybody video. knows you. Back. Everybody on, respects man. you. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> so this is actually, this came from my community. Um, it, was, it was a really good question. If you're not living in Alaska, where would you live? Ooh, that's a tough one, man. I definitely wouldn't go back to Michigan or New York or Washington State. Uh, maybe North Carolina? No, not North Carolina. Either. That's the East Coast. Not right now, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> you know what? I would probably look uh, look somewhere South Dakota, you know, Missouri. One of those places that don't really like to take too much crap from the government. Uh, not Texas. I think Texas is too big. I like Texas. I've been there. I have family there. But uh, like I said, I, I, I would like to be somewhere more of a rural area or, or even like a rural state that's kind of like hillbilly-ish, for a lack of better terms. West Virginia but, would be perfect for you. It's very well, you know secluded. What, uh, People leave you alone. Yeah. Um, well, I told my boss before, before I left the rat race, he's like, what are you going to do? I'm like, listen, I just want to be a hillbilly. <laughs> you know, I just want to be free. I want to be a hillbilly. I want to be a Dominican hillbilly, all right? I just want to wake up when I want to wake up. I want to go feed my chickens. You know, I want to go hunting when I want. I want to go. That's what I want to do. You know, I want to learn how to play the banjo. You know what? I want to get a pair of overalls. You know, that that's that's my lifestyle. That's what I enjoy doing. You know, so I would like to, if I had to leave Alaska, which I never will, but if I did, I'd want to go to, I'd want to go to a state where if you go to church and you have a pair of overalls on you know those those jean overalls that that's all right as long as you're wearing a nice shirt you know and clean shoes so you know that. th that's kind of like you know that's kind of like what i like you know because to me everywhere i've been to that's like that is more community centric where people really care about their community and uh, it is like that up here. You know, I'm very happy where I am here. Even even with I the was going to ask you what it was like. I mean, because it looks kind of secluded up where you're at uh, in that part of Alaska. Yeah. But I was wondering well, what the people were like. I'm not very far away from town, but I'm far away enough to where if something really bad happened, nobody's going to come up here. You know, so so I'm I'm far away enough from town to be able to go to town wherever I want, as long as I have a few minutes to spare. And I'm also far away enough where I feel pretty safe that if something really bad happened, uh, that nobody's going to be coming up here because there's really nothing up north of where I live. All right, folks, uh, really quickly, if you've not done so, please like or dislike the video and please go check out Alaska Prepper um, and consider donating to Texas. Again, the link is right down below. We're getting ready to do a giveaway. It's going to take two seconds here, Rudy. Okay. Really? All yeah. Right. Well, maybe a little bit longer in two seconds. Oh, no, tonight, take your time. Take your time. We're giving away dog tags. And awesome. uh, you know what, Rudy? You can win this too, brother. Uh, no, we're giving you away a decal. Me, hey, hey you, you sent me the first uh, dog tag you ever sent out. I got it. Um, we're giving away a Prepper Nation themed bracelet. Woo. And a Camo Camp Bright flashlight. Okay, guys? The rules are very simple. Right beside the computer here, I have a prepping item. And this particular prepping item can be anything. It can be uh, something that you consume, something you defend with, something you barter with. The first person that drops it in chat wins. What do you think it is, Rudy? You said something you can consume? Yeah, anything. Something you can consume, barter with. Uh, oh, it's a knife. Put in a boomstick. What's that? Ah, uh, it's not a knife. <clears throat> Someone said silver flashlight knife. 
water filter. You can't beef stew. <laughs> beef stew. <laughs> this one's a little harder. I may have to to give a hint here in a minute. Slow chats on. That's what's killing them. They're guessing, then they have to wait thirty seconds. Ah. What are you doing here? Well, that one's pretty close. Uh, a few people have said alcohol. So I'll tell you what, the first person that tells me what kind of alcohol. Whiskey. Gatorade. Moonshine. Somebody said moonshine. Not moonshine. Vodka. Vodka. Okay, somebody whiskey. got it. If the moderators can go back and let me know, the first person that got wine. I saw it pop up, but then it blasted off. If uh, one of the moderators doesn't mind going up there and tell me the first person, um, I'll mail that out to you and everything, guys. Thank you very much. So, Rudy, while they are cleaning up the mess over here in chat, let me ask you what your thoughts are on the potential of so many new homeless Americans by the end of the year and oh, what man. kind of impact that's going to have on the prepping community. All right. So this is what I think. Man, this is really, I, I don't think it's conspiratorial because I think it's based on history and history often rhymes. So obviously we have a lot of people in this country that want the United States of America to be a, you know, to not be a uh, free country. And I'm just going to say the word socialist, okay? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They want to You're be right. a socialist country, right? So if you brainstorm this, the government just passed a bill or a law, whatever they want to call it, by edict more than likely, that the uh, moratoriums on evictions are extended till, what is it now, till the summer or April? I, I think, think they extended so, yeah. them. Right? Around April, I think. And then they passed uh, on that a $1.9 trillion relief bill. They just passed like $25 billion for, for rental. Uh, assistance. So what they're doing is, is they are going to continue to get the people hooked on government help. So I personally don't think that there's going to be a lot of evictions in the coming months or homeless people. I think the government's going to keep coming up with, I hope you don't think this is the last stimulus bill they're doing. Because there's going to be no, many no, more. They'll keep it going as long as they can, you know. There's going to be yeah. There's going to be many more stimulus bills. Yeah. Okay. They're until we have to condition that, people to that idea, I think. Yeah. Until we have that one really big event that we're waiting on in order for them to go to the next step, they're going to condition people to not have to pay for rent. They're paying for the rent. So, and then by by the time that everything's said and done, and then we have that big event, who knows if people will have to pay rent at all. Because how many landlords are there going to be left? That's true. They um, can't pay their mortgage. They can't I mean, pay their at mortgage. At some point, though, own. don't we run out of money to give these people? Or do we how, just print how you, more? How do you run out of money when you can when you when you have the world reserve currency and you ha and you own the printing press? Yeah, that's let definitely going to drive the dollar down. <laughs> yeah, let me ask you a question. If you, if you had a printer in your house and you knew that you could print money indefinitely without going to jail, would you? Uh, probably, but at some point it would catch up to you. You know what I mean? It would be it everywhere. Catch, yeah. and, and it will catch up. It's going to catch mm -hmm. up to us. It will. But um, uh, it's going to take a little bit of time. The thing is, is that last. thank you very much for that. Uh, she said, so awesome to see my two favorite preppers in the same space. Thank you very much. Um, Timothy, thank you. John, with your $1,400, make sure you buy a few extra folding saws, brother. <laughs> Excellent, excellent, excellent advice. Yeah, the last time I went camping, um, I did a, like, I pulled everything out on video out of the uh, rucksack and, and showed everybody what I was taking, and I forgot to put the foldable saw back in. Oh, get yourself uh, a silky saw. You won't regret it. A what now? A silky saw. Gotcha. <laughs> silky saw is the best darn thing since sliced bread. And, and the worst part is we got back, we realized that my friend James actually had a, one of the small commando saws in his bag, but he didn't realize he had it, you know, so it was, it was horrible. Um, so the digital reset at some point, I think it's coming. 
I don't know if you yeah. agree with that or not, but I, I if think it were so. to come, what's that? I think so. Um, how can people prepare for that? Do the do the do the same things you're doing now if you're prepping. Because the thing is this, we cannot stop what's coming. All right, we we can't stop it. It's going to come. So the question you have to ask yourself is this. Would you be better off being prepared when the cost of living goes up by 75%? Yes. You know, my I like to say that my pantry is one of my best savings accounts. Yeah, good investment. Because it's something, it's something that I know I'm going to use, and it's something that I know is going to get more expensive over time. Next year, everything that I bought this year or last year, coming into this year, by the end of this year is going to be worth 30 to 40% more. So it's a great savings account. You're actually earning an interest on your food preps, right? So we, what's going to happen is, is that our standard of living is going to be diminished by about 75%. What, what happened when, the, when FDR, when FDR took away the gold, I mean, the gold from the people, right? When he confiscated it. By how much did the standard of living of the average American go down? Do you know? I, I don't know what percentage now. It went down by 75%. Wow. You know why? Because he made everyone sell that sell back their gold for $20.67 an ounce, right? Once he collected all the gold that he thought he would be able to collect, which was, I think, about 100 and something million ounces. Remember, there wasn't that many people back then as there is now. So yeah. I think he collected around 100 and, 100 and something million ounces of gold, right? He revalued. The price of gold from twenty dollars and sixty-seven cents to thirty-five dollars. That Man, is a bunch in of money. Effect, so, in effect, what he did by revaluing gold to thirty-five dollars, he just increased the inflation on the price that people pay for goods by seventy-five percent. So he gave them twenty bucks for their ounce of gold, and then he revalued gold at thirty-five dollars, which made that twenty dollars really now only be worth about five dollars you see how that works guess yeah. what guess what happened in 1971 73 if you take a look at a uh, inflation calculator go and punch in how much was how much how many dollars would i need today to buy the same thing that i could buy with a dollar back in 1971 i believe it's like uh ah shoot oh my grandparents tell me all the time <laughs> Wait, just a second man just a second. <laughs> He's pulling it up. Uh, guys, I'm getting ready to break open a NOS energy drink. What's everybody out there drinking? I'm just curious while we're doing this here. Hopefully nothing illegal. There we go. <laughs> Technology. Okay. So if you take a look at from 1971 to 2021, this is using the government's numbers. So you could pretty much multiply this by two. But a dollar in 1971 takes almost $7 today. All right? It takes almost $7 to spend today. So since 1971 to today, inflation has gone up by about 700%. Yeah. And it's not going to be long before it goes up that much more again. There you go. So, so that's where I come up. That's where I come up with about 75% reduction in your standard of living. Because if your money, if your wealth is worth about 75% less, then that means that your standard of living is going to have to go down by 75%. So the more things that you have now at today's prices, the better off you'll be later. And people always ask, well, when is this going to happen? What does it matter? Do you get insurance the day before a car accident? <laughs> yeah. No, you want to you have it know. way before just in case. Yeah, but how do you know that you're going to have a car accident tomorrow? Yeah. You get insurance just in case. If you never have a car accident in your entire life, is it a bad thing that you had to get insurance? No, it's not because it gave you peace of mind and you knew that if something happened, you would be covered. So why in the world would the average person not get food insurance, water insurance, self-defense in case the cops can't get to your house on time? Why would the average person not get those things? So, yeah, next, our next big crash, we're going to be seeing, you know, the average standard of living, I would say 70 percent, if not more. Wow. It's not going to be good, man. You know, uh, and I, I'm an optimist person by nature. 
by nature, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm optimistic, but it's hard but, to be you know, optimistic though, right now. Yeah, you, but, know? you know, I'm a realist as well. And, and yeah. the reason that you see me smile when I said it's going to be bad is because I know it's going to be bad, but I'm doing something about it. And you're prepared. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm asking the person that's looking at this video, thinking that I'm a crazy person. Why won't you just prepare a little bit? That way you yeah. won't be a drain on the system and instead be able to help people instead of ask for help. Yeah. You know, emergency uh, insurance, basically, you know, that's what it is. That's all it is. It's all it is. Um, so here's a, here's a hypothetical question. Okay. You wake up tomorrow morning, Rudy, and you are president of the United States. I would vote for you folks. If you're in the chat, let me know if you'd vote for Rudy. I think he would win. What are the first three things you would do to fix this country? Get rid of the fed, get rid of the IRS one and two, go back to a constitutional Republic form of law. You got my vote. (laughs) <laughs> sign me you up get, man get rid of the irs get rid of the federal reserve go back to a constitutional republic form of law where law is law and not by edict that's no it. gun grabbing it, right it would take it would take a long time it, it would take a decade it would it would take a decade for us to actually be all right because if you did that it would cause a lot of pain but it would allow us to be free and being free is not easy being free is not supposed to be easy. You know, being free is, is pretty much being responsible for your own actions. But nowadays, people want the government to take care of them from cradle to grave. You know, um, so, yeah, man, those are my three things. And even though I can't run for president because I was born in the Dominican Republic, you know, um, uh, may, maybe I can become a, a dictator or something. <laughs> Yeah, well, if you run if you run under the right party, they might let that slide. Um, Timothy, thank you. He says, Alaska, do you ever get tired of saying I told you so? LOL, love your channel, man. Oh no, I don't. Hey, thank you, man. Thank you. I, I don't like to say I told you so. Uh, even even if uh, a situation arises where I could, I would never do that. I, and I know he's just kidding. I know he's just playing yeah, around. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know what? The thing is, is that I rather not. I'd rather not put myself, I'd rather not have to be in that position. I'd rather be wrong. Everything I told you today about the economy and stuff like that and how it's going and how the stock market is going to crash, it's yeah. going to be the biggest crash. The biggest transfer of wealth in human history is going to occur in our life. Think about that. No, I understand. Would, um, you would rather not have a car crash, but if you have yeah. the car crash, you want the insurance. You yeah, know yeah. I mean? So I, I would rather be wrong. I would mm-hmm. rather, you know, when, when I'm 70 years old, I would rather my grandkids be making fun of me because they saw my videos and I was saying, yeah, this is going to happen because and it never happened. I would rather be 100 percent wrong. Trust me, John, if things were to stay the status quo, meaning if things were to stay the same way they are now, I'll be fine. I will be fine. But what do you want for your children? Yeah, I would rather leave me. this world knowing that my children have a world in which they can be free and, and decide to practice that of which their own will. Tells they're them to they're going to have to figure out how to clean the mess up right now. That's being made, you know? Yeah. Um, so I've got one more question for you, Rudy. Um, first of all, do you have a commercial driver's license? No. Okay, well, you need to get one because I need you to take some people to school here, okay? I get this question a lot. I'm sure you get this question a lot. You can't eat silver. I need you to take people to school on that. No, actually, um, actually, you can. Oh, man, I need to show you this, John. I need to show you this before we start on silver. Let me, let me get one out of the bag. Uh-oh. I hope I hope you'll be able to see it. So My favorite is not with me, but I have a generic round that has uh, oh, I'm a huge fan of the awesome. book Dracula, and it has Count Dracula on it. I don't think you'll be able to see it, but the story behind this is I went to uh, – there's a coin shop that I go to. I saw that on your channel, yeah. Tell tell the uh, chat here. Uh, you can't see it. It's no good. So there's a coin shop that I've been going to in Fairbanks for years now, ever since I've been here, really. And uh, we've become pretty good friends. And uh, I go in there the other day just to chit chat, you know, and I ended up buying like two or three ounces of silver. And uh, one of the gentlemen that works there, his name is Dick. Dick and Jerry are the guys that work there. So the, if you see my videos, the taller guy 
this day. And uh, he says, hey, I got something for you. So he gave me this little bag. And I'm like, oh, those are 10,000 rounds. And he's like, yeah. I'm like, cool, how much are they? He's like, no, no, this is, a, this is a gift for you. And I'm like, no, you know, and after the one or two minutes of saying, no, no, you can't do that, whatever. He said, just look at them. Take a look at them really close. And uh, I look at them. And it just happens to be that Dick mints his own coins. Mm -hmm. So so he gave me 10 uh, personally minted Alaska Prepper coins. Where on one side it says Alaska Prepper with a little uh, snow cluster in the middle or a snowflake in the middle. And in the back it says silver, you know, one ten pounds. And my so moderators my, are going to be upset because weren't you giving those out to your moderators? Yeah, that's what I said. Oh, I, I gave them all away. <laughs> They're all, I got to I my game up over here, man. I haven't mailed them yet, but today I went out and got envelopes and stuff so I can mail them out. And uh, after I realized that I gave them all away, because I, I have exactly 10 moderators, yeah, uh, I went back and I was like, hey, Dick, can you make me some more? He's like, oh, man, it, you know, it might take me a while. I'm like, it doesn't matter. So he made me 20 more. Awesome. I, I'll probably give some of those away here and there, but probably I'll end up keeping those for myself. I just thought yeah, it's pretty I saw cool. that video over there and I was like, man, my, my moderators are going to think I'm so cheap now. You know, they're like, no, dog tags. we don't want these things, man. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, ladies and gentlemen, no, you're right. You can't eat silver. You can eat it, but it's not going to do you any good. Okay. Uh, but it depends where you are. If you go to Venezuela right now, this one ounce silver coin can feed a family of four for five days wow. a balanced a balanced diet, meaning that they're going to get breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and they're going to get about 3,000 calories a day. So a family of four can eat for five days a balanced diet. I'm not talking about just rice and beans. I'm talking about everything that a balanced diet includes, your proteins, your fats, your dairies, your grains, your vegetables, everything. All right. So in Venezuela, you can't eat silver, right? You can't eat it, right? But instead of actually eating it and not getting any nutritional value out of it, you can cash it in in their currency so that you can go ahead and feed your families for five days. Now, if it's one person, turn that into a month. One ounce of silver will feed you for a full month in Venezuela if you're one person. If you just buy the staples, if you are just in survival mode and you're eating rice and beans and a little bit of salt and oil, this will mm. feed a family of four for a month. So, you know, you can either put your excess wealth. And what I mean by excess wealth is this. Personally, I don't think that anyone has any business buying any gold or silver or wealth preserving mechanisms unless they have all their preps. If you all don't right. have all your preps for at least a year, if you don't have contingency plans for your heating or for your water or for your food or for your medical and all that kind of stuff, you have no business buying precious metals. Now, if you have all your preps mm -hmm. and uh, you still have excess wealth, then you need to put that somewhere. Would you rather put it in this? All right. That's been money, real money for the last 6,000 years. Or would you rather put it in a, in a piece of paper that the government says it's money just because they say it's money. That's only been around for a hundred years. That's been it's devalued, what, 700% so far? Yeah. Oh, no, that's yeah. that's just since, that's just since, uh, since 71. Yeah, that's crazy. Right? That's just since 1971. Since, uh, what do you need, a flashlight? Yeah. Okay, here, just a second. Sorry, man. No, you're fine, man. You're fine. Checking the chat here. Okay, that's a good question, Nana. I'll I'll ask him. He will know. Um, somebody in the chat wants to know. Uh, actually, a lot of people. What happens to Bitcoin when the grid goes down? Okay, just just a second, man. I'm sorry. It's oh, you're fine, man. Oh, you want me to get it? All right. What happens to Bitcoin when the grid goes down? Yeah. And when when you say when the grid goes down, like goes down for a week or, or permanently? Um, well, I wouldn't say permanently, but, you know, like maybe long year? term, several months or something. OK, the same thing will happen to Bitcoin that happens to the dollar. 
It'll 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 go away until the grid comes back. Okay. However, this is what I want to. This is what I like to tell people when they bring up that question because it comes up all the time. If the grid goes down, let's say for long term, we're, we're talking about like life changing. The grid goes down. You know, people are. It's, it's like an SHTF, right? Kind of mm -hmm. like. If the grid goes down long term, I guarantee you that the last thing you're going to be thinking about is silver or gold or dollars or your 401k or Bitcoin. You're going to be thinking about food, water, shelter, warm, self-defense, self-defense and self-defense. All right. So if the grid goes down, it doesn't matter what you have. You're going to be thinking about survival. Yes, Bitcoin exists in the interweb. However, it's independent, meaning that there is no one place that controls Bitcoin. So when the grid comes back up, as long as there is one computer in the world, just one computer in the world, all right, mm -hmm. that can host Bitcoin, then every other computer that hooks onto it will have the entire Bitcoin network back up and running. Oh, there would be people scrambling to get one up. I would, I would think, you know, as soon as possible. Oh, yeah. Too much money tied look, up into it now, you know. Look, look, Bitcoin is just a a way that you can diversify your wealth preservation. That's all it is. It's a tool, right? People get hung up on this. People get hung up on money. You know, this is real money. They get hung up on this. They got hung up on fiat currency. And what they don't realize is that that I'll, I'll say money, and I, and when I say money, I mean everything like fiat currency, silver, gold, Bitcoin. Money is just a tool. It is a tool that gives you options. When you have more money, you have more options. When you have no money, you have no options except to go and get a handout from Uncle Sam. Okay, so so yeah, if if the grid goes down, Bitcoin will go down, but so will your ATM. And so will and so will your credit cards, and so will the digits that you have in a bank somewhere, and so will the digits that you have in some kind of a hedge fund account that holds your retirement pay. I mean your retirement. Right. So I mean, that's not really something I'm worried about. Because if, if something like that happens, who cares if you have Bitcoin or silver or gold? Who cares? Because it's not gonna matter. All that's gonna matter is that you put away enough food, that you put away enough water, you have self-defense. That's what's going to matter. Um, thank you, Timothy. He asks, if the grid went down, couldn't they te technically wipe any electric money, even banks if they wanted to? Banks, Bitcoin, PayPal? I I don't understand that question. If the grid goes, if the grid goes down. If the grid went down, it, technically, could they wipe the electronic money out? Like Bitcoin? Yeah. No, no, absolutely no. not. Okay. No. Yeah, they they can wipe out the um uh, they can they can wipe out the exchanges. So if you have Bitcoin in an exchange like Coinbase, if you have it, if you're letting them hold it there, they can wipe that out because that's completely centralized. However, I recommend that anyone that does get cryptos get a hardware wallet and pull that out of the internet and, and lock put it, it up. Folks. Yep, and <laughs> have it in your possession. Now Do you not know lose your password either, right? Don't if you lose it, it's gone. Yeah, but do you want to be free or not? You want to you want to have someone taking yeah. care of you with FBIC, or do you want to be a free human being? It's up to you, man. Most people thing is, man. Most people don't. Most people don't want to be free, and that's just a matter of fact. You know, most yeah. people want to be taken care of. You know, and that's I, just the way it is. On a personal level, I think the more they make this move towards socialism and potentially communism, the more people are going to be turned on by things like Bitcoin and Litecoin and things. Um, it's going to become more appealing to some people, you know, the people that want to be free. Yeah, and that's why Bitcoin was started. That's why the Bitcoin movement is as big as it is. And uh, there's no turning back. There's no turning it back now. I mean, it is what it is. So if you um, have a couple of minutes, Rudy, uh, I've got somebody in the green room. He's a patron. He's been waiting probably an hour back here because wow. he wants to talk and everything to you. Uh, do you okay, have yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Hey, brother, I'm sorry you had to wait back there so long, man. How are you? Oh, that's fine. Oh, I've just been enjoying the talk. <laughs> six Shooter, big How fan of Rudy's. 
Good to meet you. Pretty man. good. How about you? Good, good, good. It's uh, good to meet you. Same here, man. Nice to meet you too. Six Shooter, what do you think about crypto, man, now that you've heard uh, the professor here explain it? He explained it so well, man. Well, like I said before, when I was talking to you, you know, I don't know a lot about it and I haven't got into it or anything like that, but I like how he's explaining it. It it, it makes a lot more sense that way. Yeah. Uh, the yeah, dollar is not... About, you know, you know I, I've said this, I think I've said this about six times already on this show, but it's all about being diversified, number one. And mm. number two, it's about not falling in love with the wealth-preserving vehicle of your choice. Don't fall in love. Look, do you really think that if one day this thing goes up to $1,000, like people are saying it will, it will, that I won't trade this in? <laughs> yeah. This is a tool. This is a tool. I, I, don't, I, I don't sleep with this in my bed. This <laughs> is a tool. This is, it just happens to be that it's money. It, it, it fills all of the requirements of what money needs to be. But if mm. this thing ever goes up to a price where I can change my life for the better and my children's life for the better and maybe pay for my daughter's, you know, whatever she wants to be when she grows up, if she wants to go to college, hopefully not. But anyways, right? If this will allow me to do those things, I'm not going to keep it just because it's nice and shiny. I'm mm -hmm. going to allow it to do what it was meant to do preserve my wealth and allow me to have options so that I can live a better life and hopefully, you know, help others live a better life as well. Just hold so, the value but, a lot more than the, you know, the U S dollar, U S yeah, dollar I mean, is not going back up in value anytime soon. Oh no. You know what? You, whenever you hear that the U S dollar is going up in value, uh, it's not really going up in value. It's going up in value against the other currencies that it's, that is competing with. So like, with the yen from Japan, the yuan from China, the pound and the sterling, or, or the euro, the pound, sterling, and the euro. That's the only thing that is going up in value against. But all of these other central banks are printing just as much, if not more, than we are. So mm. whenever you see the dollar go up and down, it's not going up and down against your purchasing power of the things that you can buy with it. It's going up and down against the purchasing power of all those other currencies. And they're all printing at the same time. All right. So so whenever you see that, that's that's what's going on. You know, it's just a way of them, you know. Of them wanting to show you or, or make you think that the dollar actually has value. It has almost no value left from its inception, maybe one and a half percent left, about ninety eight and a half percent of its value from its inception in 1913 has already been inflated away. But but, yeah, that's that's what money is, man. Whether you want to consider it uh, dollars, silver, gold, crypto. All it is is a tool. And if you use that tool, you know, for the betterment of yourself, your family and others, then I think that in the end, you'll be OK. If mm. if you're a pig, you know, I tell people, don't be a pig. You know, if you go into <laughs> stock market and, you, and you make 200 percent, don't be a pig. Take some profits. Do something with that. If you're a pig, maybe things won't work out that great. You know, I don't but, know about six you, but I feel like I'm sitting in class and Rudy's just up here like a professor. He's getting ready to hand out tests and everything. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> You're just knowledgeable, I, I, man. I couldn't know? make it through that class. <laughs> You're just knowledgeable. Um, so six shooter, do you have any questions for him? This is the man to ask. If is that an O light, by the way, on your hat? Yep, it actually is. It's uh my favorite one that I've got just for the fact that I can stick it on that Velcro patch and you cool. know, always have a headlamp. That's sweet, man. I've got headlamps, but not, you know, not Olight brand because mm -hmm. um, I'm on a budget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I understand that. But uh, I've had really good luck with it so far. But I just want to say I appreciate uh, being able to come on here and talk to you a little bit and, you know, all that stuff. And I really appreciate how much charity type stuff you know, that you do in the prepping community and all that. You know, you. like he said, you know, you're a really big icon in that community and things and uh really known for being such a nice guy and so charitable and everything so you know i wanted to tell you thank you for that and all that thank kind of you, stuff I but, that. he's the nicest um, guy in yeah. the community i think be ready today is right there i don't know if you know who that is rudy i <laughs> yeah, think you're gonna I, be I up there tomorrow you. you're gonna be up there tomorrow right o over where uh be ready today i don't know what time uh, I've got it written down six o'clock tomorrow. 
Oh, I, I might be. I might be to tell you the truth. You know, I, I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you. To tell you the <laughs> truth, I try not to watch that many prepping videos mm. because, man, I'll tell you what, it just wears me out. So you know, every once in a while, you'll see me pop on, pop in in one of your live streams, you know, and then you may not see me for a while because mm. I just, you know, I pop in and out every once in a while to support other YouTube creators, uh, you know, preppers, because I think it's important, but I try not to watch a lot of it because it is draining, man. It is draining. If all you do, all prepper channels are by their nature, somewhat of a gloomy and doomy subject matter. Yeah, because what are we prepping for? We, we don't prep for when things are good. I mean, what do I need to tell you to prep for when, you know, there's a, unicorns are in rainbows. Everything's great. What are you prepping for, right? We prep for when things are not at their best, right? When yeah. there's crisis. That, so it gets gloomy and doomy. So every once in a while, I step away from it and, and I don't spend a lot of time, you know, watching a lot of other prepper channels. Yes, I still stay subscribed and, and I pop in every once in a while. And I, like I watched your last video. That's why I do that Godfather deal you were talking about, <laughs> uh, you know? So, yeah, yeah, I'll go back and forth, but I really don't spend a whole bunch of time just on prepper videos. I, I'd rather just, you know, watch a few prepper videos a day, and then the rest of my days I just spend watching fluffy kitty cats. You watch <laughs> fluffy kitty cats? I, I like to fluffy watch Western. Cats and... <laughs> <laughs> no, but, hey, thank you very much, Six Shooter. Man, it's not, I was going to say it's nice meeting you, but I have seen you before. You've been on John's channel before. Is that a uh, new yeah. backdrop there, Six Shooter? It is. I just got it in the other day. Hopefully, it looks awesome. a little bit better. That's <laughs> awesome, man. It pops. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I was watching y'all earlier, and I kind of heard uh, Rudy over here talking. So. Uh -oh. oh, that's nice, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You come down that to Virginia, awesome. I'll teach you how to play. <laughs> Give us a little tune, man. Give us a little bit. Yeah. Hopefully it's not too loud. It is kind of loud, so you might have to turn the volume down. Right. But... That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, you needed to charge an entry fee, <laughs> Dan. <laughs> That's that good, is man. awesome, man. That is, you know what? I've always wanted to learn how to play the guitar, and a friend of ours uh, sent me a guitar after I left the workforce. But I, I have a, my arm, my left arm is really, really bad, and mm. I just can't, you know, hold the neck. But um, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Well, um, you know, I play guitar and everything, too. My dad taught me when I was like six, and uh, when I was about 16, I learned how to play the banjo, but with your left hand, uh, the banjo is easier to play. The strings are a lot softer yeah. and easier to push uh, versus okay. playing a guitar. Maybe I'll give it a try because I've always mm -hmm. wanted to learn how to play. An, it's something I've never done is learn how to play an instrument well. You know, yeah. And, um, well, so, I yeah, don't play I them too good. but <laughs> Oh, that was awesome. Are you kidding me? I told Johnny he should have charged a cover fee for that. <laughs> I think I was the first one to uh, play an instrument on one of uh, John's streams. <laughs> oh, yeah. That thing's welcome over here anytime because yeah, I tried awesome. to play the acoustic guitar time. a couple of times. I just couldn't pick it up, man. I don't <laughs> have the talent for it. I got one of them laying over to the side, too. <laughs> yeah. See, my whole reasoning was, and I told this story once before, but I was going to learn how to play the acoustic guitar to get out of buying like Valentine's Day gifts and stuff. Then you'd be like, baby, I wrote you a song, you know, and then you get out of it uh, having to drop the money for it. So, yeah, we were talking about that last time. And uh, I was telling you how I don't really have a, you know, artistic touch for writing. So you just said, pull up some old song she ain't heard and <laughs> claim it. <laughs> yeah. So, folks, thank you uh, very much, Rudy, for being here. Well, thank you. If you don't mind, me. hang out for a couple of minutes after the stream ends, brother. So I can talk yeah, to you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you, Six Shooter, for being on. Thank you, all of you folks here in the chat. Thank you very much. And please remember the first link down below. Uh, the donations do go to help Texas. And Rudy is going to make sure that gets done 100%. Um, and thank you very much for being here. 
check out Alaska Prepper. Um, if you're in the chat and you don't know who Alaska Prepper is, please check him out. But I don't think that there's a single person in here that doesn't know who Rudy is. Um, uh, cause I'm a gambling man, <laughs> but anyway, um, you folks have a blessed night. Okay. Um, see you in the morning. I got to film premiere.